Okay, Cancer. Well, last night when I was recording the first part of this, uh, somebody walked in the room and I had to stop it. And because I can't combine files, YouTube doesn't have that feature anymore. I decided to make this into two parts. And so I was getting ready to put out all of the Oracle cards. And I put out the first one from the Native Spirit deck, Great Mystery, and I'm going to continue. Interesting. Wind activation. This is from the Earth Magic deck. And I'm going to pick one from the Energy Oracle deck. And the last one, sorry about the shadows, it's funny because I must have a setting on my filming that is making shadows. Usually there aren't any, but there's a really overcast day, so I had to turn on the light inside here even though it's in the morning. And this, oh, this is interesting. This is from the... <laughs> Why can't I think of the name of this deck? Keepers of the Light Oracle deck. And Diana is the goddess, is the moon goddess. That's why she's got that. And in, I, I guess it's Egyptian, isn't that Isis? I'm not sure um, what particular culture. I think it's in somewhere in the, I think in, I think, I, or is Isis, is that Egyptian? Well, whatever. They're all names for the moon goddess. So I'm going to read that one in a few minutes. I'm going to start, you know what, I think I'm going to start with Diana. I'm very intrigued about the fact that you're ruler. That's where I was going with that, in case you didn't know. I'm sure most of you got it. Okay, let's look at this again. Focused intention. Think about what you desire. Set your sights high. Expect the best possible outcome. That's the key. <laughs> uh, setting your intentions is important too and focusing on it. You know what I was thinking? The chariot card and the major arcana is connected to cancer. And that is about one-pointedness. That's about that focus that gives you a victory. Diana is the Roman god moon goddess of the hunt. She is also known as Artemis in Greek mythology, where she has similar attributes. She is often depicted with wild animals around her, and as she is associated with the moon, she connects deeply with the wild beasts that come out at night. She is often seen holding a bow and the quiver of and a quiver of arrows, which signifies her ability to help us focus on a vision. She also helps us tune into our intuitive side so that we can listen to the wisdom that will guide us towards our goal. In particular, she encourages women to move into their true power and promotes equality for all souls. And the extended message is move forwards with unwavering faith, knowing that the universe is supporting you. What did I tell you? What was that uh, affirmation in the first part of this video? The, the universe has your back. Any questions? Diana is helping you awaken your divine ability to manifest what you deserve. Any fear is only a reminder that whatever you are working on or through is an important issue for your growth. Your focus is strong now and will be particularly powerful at the full moon. You may be aware of night owl tendencies. This is because your angels and guides are sending you important messages that you may be missing during the day due to a due to a busy schedule. Set some time aside to do a deep meditation to receive the guidance. That's the first time I ever heard about insomnia being described as that, but that's a nice spin on things, I guess. Okay, and then we got strategy. This card shows a pen, journal, compass, and key. When you receive this card upright, 
it indicates that this is the optimum time for setting up a very specific strategy for achieving your goals. Write about the direction you want to go in. Consider any potential change in course that may be needed. Be aware of the particulars regarding your goals and have some conscious plan in mind. Structure the short-term goals needed to make your long-term goal a reality. This, time, this card is telling you to spend some time setting things in order. It's time to take full control. Add thought to action and set your sights on the road ahead. And, you know, uh, I was just thinking as I was saying that, that Cancers will be having a full moon in their sign on January 1st. Can you believe it? If that isn't a fresh slate, what is? Because the full moon can be that you're kind of uh, shedding your old skin and changing things up. So in December, we have a Mercury retrograde for most of the month in Sagittarius. And then in January, it's like a reboot, you know. So be sure to embrace the change that comes your way. Or maybe you're even going to create that change for yourself now. Like they said, through writing it down. Writing things down might give you more of a sense of structure in this, and that can be very helpful. Okay. <clears throat> and the card I got for the Native Spirit deck, or no, this is Earth Magic, is Wind Activation. And I immediately thought of Gemini, because that's the sign right next to you. And you are having a full moon there, but that's in your 12th house. So that's kind of like the dream, dream time. Okay, let's see what it says for that. The, lethar the lethargy you feel is the result of a lack of activation. In other words, something that stirs your senses. This could be anything from walking outdoors, feeling the breeze on your body, or inhaling the different aromas that nature herself provides. Or it could be finding the pleasure in a warm bath that helps you release the tension and stress from your mind and body. Music may activate your hearing, which sparks the pleasure centers in your brain. Art may activate your emotional responses. The touch of another human may activate a deep need to be physically held in some manner once again. Now is the time for action. Engage in some activity and be fully present so that you forget about your surroundings and enter into that timeless and multi-dimensional experience of union with the focus of your creative intent, uh, attention. Let your physical body be active. Movement alone, whether quietly dancing by yourself or hiking up that hill over yonder will require you to be as present as possible in your body. Enjoy. And um, it's, it's very interesting because um, the fifth house is the house of sports and um, other activities like that, um, maybe even personal things that you do. So you may want to engage in something along those lines. You have so much support in November, especially because you have all these plants there. And of course, um, Mars is going to be moving into that sector as well. I didn't check the date on it, but I'm assuming it's sometime in December. So Mars in the fifth house can make you very active and maybe even competitive in sports if that's something that appeals to you. But uh, even with your sixth house, it's health. And that may be something some of you may have engaged in a, in a workout routine during the last two and a half years while Saturn has been in that sector. And uh, that might just be re reiterating the importance of, of it because... Uh, there's a great book on the chakras, and the woman's last name is Judith. You usually think of that as the first name, but that's her last name. And what's so great about this is that she offers exercises for the different chakras, uh, like even physical exercises, to activate them or actually to balance them more. So if you have... Um, 
sluggish third chakra, which is the power center, then you may have a hard time saying no. You may feel like a victim in your own life. And, um, and you constantly feel like you can't ask for what you need. So she, I thought this was really fascinating. She was talking about jogging and how jogging can really activate your third chakra and make, you know, energize it. And, it, you know, when I was younger, I liked to run, but I never really uh, got into it as a thing. And I was thinking when I see these people that are jogging all the time, I bet you they are type A personalities because I'm sure that that appeals to people who are just kind of like um, go-getter types of people. But if you are somebody who feels that you need more empowerment, self-empowerment, you might decide to take up something like jogging. But I do recommend if you do, because I know that some people, they, they get knee problems because they're jogging on asphalt or they're overweight when they start to do it and they say, oh, okay, I'm going to try to lose weight by jogging. Then you're putting too much weight on your joints. So... I don't. I mean, I don't know what a personal trainer would recommend, but uh, it seems logical to me that you would maybe wait until you're in within the normal range of of weight before you do something like that. I don't know, but it seems like it might be kind of risky to uh, jog. But I do see overweight people jogging. Um, it's you know, it's good that people want to do it. I just feel like you have to prevent injury. Maybe doing it on a padded. Uh, field, whatever they call those things, those uh, padded track would, would, uh, you know, absorb the shock or, um, or even like, um, you know, another thing too, you, you, people can do is walking and then run, you know, doing a little bit of fast and then slowing down, you know, so you just kind of like alternate and you're not doing this constant thing. Um, sometimes people push themselves too far. So you should definitely check that out if that interests you. But um, the last card that I got was the Great Mystery. And I, I said this in the first part. So I've been getting this card over and over again. And I really, I think these colors remind me of like cancer in a way. I don't know what your official, I know you have the Moonstone for gemstones, but... Um, Have faith and know that you're divinely guided, even when you have doubts. Trust that you're exactly where you need to be. Believe you've planted your seeds, now allow the Creator to do the rest. Even if you can't see into the future, have faith that the path will be illuminated and go forward. If you have any recurring challenges, turn them over to the Creator. Not my will, but thy will be done. Your native spirit wants you to know. Many native cultures refer to the Creator as the Great Mystery. It's the idea that Great Spirit is so vast and profound that in many ways it's unknowable. Faith is the foundation of the ability to manifest. Everything was created because someone believed that it was possible. And patience is absolutely crucial in the application of this principle. Trust. Change can happen in a heartbeat, but some things require time. You've planted the seeds, now give them time to grow. Please be patient and know that it will happen. Whatever receives your care and attention will flourish. The journey. If you just planted some seeds in your garden today, you wouldn't go out tomorrow and yell at them because there wasn't any fruit yet. So don't dig up your seeds of faith. Remember this mantra, it's happening. Repeat this phrase periodically, especially if you have doubts, and keep going. I really like that one. It's pretty self-explanatory. But as I was saying before, you know, one of the things that they say is you do your part and then you say, it's none of my business how this is going to happen. So you plant the seeds and then allow it to take whatever form it takes um, and have faith that it's going to happen, but not trying to double down and control and force the hand of the universe 
prematurely. Okay, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoy this cancer, and if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, many blessings in November and December for you. Take care. Bye.